Abdominal fat is dangerous for women and men. It has been linked to heart disease. The data below lists waist measurements for women and their overall cholesterol level. At the 2% significance level, tests for a linear relationship between waist circumference in women and their cholesterol level. So again, we have the sum of square values included at the bottom here. That's really helpful. And we can count to see how many ordered pairs of data we have for the problem so we know what our n is. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So n is 14 for this problem. All right, let's also pay attention to what they're asking us to do. They say they want us to test for a linear relationship, right? Just a linear relationship. They don't specify what kind of a linear relationship. So let's go ahead and express our claim using that information then. So the claim for our test is going to be as follows. The claim, of course, will involve the slope for the regression line, so the linear uh, regression line. So beta 1, the slope, and in this problem we're saying test for a linear relationship between them. So we're just saying that the slope is not equal to zero because if it was equal to zero, there'd be no linear relationship. So just to say there is a linear relationship says that it's not equal to zero. It doesn't imply whether it's positive or negative here. It just says there's some linear relationship. Okay, so now we're going to do HO and HA. All right, now for HO, we're going to express the opposite idea that beta 1 is equal to 0. The reason why we're doing that is because we can tell that not equal to is part of HA's claim set. So that means that the claim and HA must be the same in this case. All right, from there we're going to work on the data step for the problem. So let's remember that our n for the problem was 14, and the problem tells us that alpha here is 2%, so 0 0.02. That's given in the problem over there. All right, the next step is we have to work out the point estimator for the slope. So beta 1 hat we have to come up with. So when we look at beta 1 hat, remember it's the SSXY over the SSXX term, right? So the mixed term here is going to be 8,698. 8,698.371. The sum of square for the X's is going to be 1860. 1860.3. 944. Four. Alright, let's work that out in our calculator and see what our slope, slope turns out to be. Okay, so we have 8698.371 divided by 1860.944. And when we do that, we get the answer 4. So it's 4.6741 dot dot dot. I'm going to go ahead and store that in my calculator as B. Let's do alpha B. So I'm going to sort it under B since the symbol is almost B, right? It's beta. That'll help me remember where I put it. Okay, so there's my slope. Now this is an important value, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, box that so I can remember where it is later. All right, for my next problem, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and, or the next part of the problem, I should say, I want to go ahead and calculate my sum of square for errors, my SSE. SSE is SSYY minus the slope estimate beta 1 times SSXY, the mixed term. All right, let's plug in the Y values. It's going to be 221 or 221,713.4 minus the number we just got above, which is 4.6741, let's say, times the mixed term, which is the numerator of that fraction there, that's 8,698.371. All right, once we're done with all that, we'll have an answer for the sum of square for error. Okay, so we have 221,713.4 minus the slope, well we actually still have the slope in our calculator, so I'm just going to hit second answer there. So minus that answer times the 8 point, or sorry, 8,698, so 8,698.371. Alright, after doing all that, we get this very large number, we get 181,000, 181,055, so quite a large sum of square for error. All right, our next step after getting the sum of square for error is to go ahead and come up with S. Now S is very simple here. It's the square root of SSE divided by the degrees of freedom n minus two. 
So in our case, that's going to be 181.055.7241 divided by n minus 2, which is going to be 12 in this case, right? All under the square root. All right, let's see what that gives us then. I still have that number in my calculator, so I'm just going to hit divide by 12. And then when I get that answer, I'm going to raise it to the 0.5 power. And when I do that, I get a value of 122.8331267. OK, so that's my S value. I'm going to take that S value and use it in a very important step, which is to get the sum of, sorry, the um, standard error for beta 1 hat. So this is beta 1 hat standard error. Now, in order to do that, it's pretty simple. I need to plug in the S value I just calculated divided by the square root of SSXX. Okay, so let's do that now. Put the S value on top, it's 122.8331267 divided by the square root of, basically we have the denominator of this value, so it's 1860.944. Okay, so let's see what we get. I still have that S value on my screen, so I'm gonna divide by the square root of 1860.944. Close it up under the radical, hit enter, and we'll work out to get the answer 2.847. Dot, dot, dot. Let's go ahead and box that up. Now I want to store that under S. I'm going to store this answer under alpha S. This way in my calculator I have the B and S values, or the beta 1 hat values and the S for beta 1 hat. I have those plugged into my calculator so I can just enter them into the test stat without rounding. Okay, so let's do that next. Let's get a sheet of paper out, and let's go ahead and calculate the test stat and do the critical value. Okay, now that we've done our data step, let's go ahead and calculate our test stat, which should be nice and easy now. Remember, it's just a fraction that involves beta 1 hat and the standard error for beta 1 hat. So beta 1 hat, we found out that was 4.6741 dot dot dot, and the standard error for beta 1 hat was 2.847 dot dot dot, right? Okay, so let's work that out in the calculator and see what it works out to be. Remember, I stored these values in my calculator as B and S. So I'll divide B by S, and I get the answer 1.642. 1 1.642. Okay, so with that test stat value, our next step is to compare it against a critical value. So let's draw our bell curve. Let's label our rejection regions by looking at HA and realizing that because it says not equal to there, it's going to be a two-tailed hypothesis test, right? Two-tailed hypothesis test. So we're going to be dividing alpha into two sides. So that means that we're looking for the critical value that goes here and the negative of that that goes on this side, right? So we want those critical values. Remember, it'll be T alpha divided by 2 since it's on the two, it's in a two-tailed test. So in that case, we're going to use the value 0 0.01 or half of alpha, which is 0 0.02. And then we're going to use degrees of freedom 12 because we use degrees of freedom n minus 2. And of course, over here, it's negative t alpha, right, divided by 2 and degrees of freedom 12. Okay, so let's go to our table. We're going to look up 0 0.01 or look in the 0 0.01 column and look up 12 degrees of freedom, and that will give us our very important critical value, and then we'll compare our test stat against that. All right, so let's go to our table now. Okay, so we're looking for 0 0.01 in one tail with 12 degrees of freedom. We find the answer 2.681. Okay, so our critical values turn out to be 2.681 and, of course, negative 2.681. Okay, now we look at where our test stat lands with respect to the rejection region, and of course it lands over here in the white space, right? So we're going to say, do not reject HO. Do not reject HO. So do not reject the null hypothesis, and do not, therefore, support HA. All right, now. Do not support HA is how we're going to word the final answer because our claim is the same as HA. So we're going to say the sample data does not support the claim, right? The sample data does not support the claim. Does not support the claim.
Okay, so there could be a couple explanations for this. Um, you know, again, it's you know with a small sample size, it could be that that's causing it to be difficult for us to reject the null hypothesis here. Um, it could also be that there simply is not a linear relationship between the two variables. Maybe there's some other more complicated relationship, like a quadratic relationship or something like that. So it could be another reason why we were unable to reject the null hypothesis. Um, based on this test stat value here, it could be that our issue is um, has more to do with the fact that the standard error here, or the um, sorry, the uh, standard deviation for the error term, this s value, is very large. So perhaps you know if we had a larger sample size, that would have shrunk that number a little bit, and maybe that would have been good enough to increase this value eventually, right? Because you know that that value ends up going into our standard error for beta one hat, and so ultimately, if we have a larger sample size, you know our test stat, test stat might have been significant in that case. Um, but we didn't have a larger test size, a sample size, so in this problem we just have to go with what the data provided, and that is that it essentially wasn't strong enough to support the claim that there was a linear relationship.